photograph by Entertainment Pictures Element The only thing that's noteworthy about Solo, a Star Wars story, is its place in the franchise's long-established framework, but many other movie spin-offs have been artistically worthy works in themselves. For that matter, the modern cinema begins with a spin-off. Charlie Chaplin introduced his historic figure of the Little Tramp in a supporting role in a 1914 movie directed by and starring Mabel Normand, Mabel's Strange Predicament, and the first movie in which he put the Little Tramp front and center, Kid Auto Races at Venice, is a mockumentary that plays like a primordial version of reality TV. Chaplin and his director, Henry Lehrman, went on location with two movie cameras, one that was making a documentary about a go-kart meet, another that was filming the making of that film, and Chaplin was there, in costume and doing his splay-footed walk, pranking the real-life crowd, photobombing the documentary film, and incurring the wrath of the filmmaker, played by Lehrman. This primordial version of the Little Tramp, however, scowls, he's a cantankerous hero whose deft physical comedy and expressive finesse is placed in the service of a bitter vanity. What would remain of this persona, though, in the dozens of shorts and handful of features that would follow, is his righteous insolence, the Little Tramp would ridicule, with impish faux innocence and fierce indignation, the respectable institutions of law and custom that oppressed the meek and cowed the poor. Stream, Kid Auto Races at Venice, at Canopy and YouTube, It's Always Fair Weather, photographed by Entertainment Pictures, a Lemmy Chaplin directly confronted reality TV, The Real Thing, in his 1957 comedy, A King in New York, the last film in which he'd star, but the 1955 musical, It's Always Fair Weather, a spin-off of the 1949 musical, On the Town, took on that nascent medium first, and to even more decisive effect. The earlier musical told the story of three sailors on a one-day leave in New York, one of them was played by Gene Kelly, who also co-directed the film, with Stanley Donen. He returns in It's Always Fair Weather, which he and Donen also co-directed as one of a trio of newly discharged army veterans of the European campaign who get back to New York on October 11, 1945, go on a bender, and vow to meet again ten years later, to the day, at the same bar. Most of the action takes place on the fateful day in 1955, at which time they turn out to be three bitter men, disappointed in each other and in themselves. Kelly plays a glib politico who, instead of going to law school, became a small-time gambler. Dan Daly plays a formerly ambitious artist who now works himself into an ulcer at an advertising agency and talks the kind of gray flannel speak that Billy Wilder would later parody in The Apartment. Michael Kidd, better known as a choreographer, It's Always Fair Weather, written, like, on the town, by Betty Comden and Adolf Green, features some fancy dancing, as well as some choice New York locations recreated in the studio, but the songs and the production numbers seem like afterthoughts. Above all, it's a dyspeptic drama of post-war life that targets the respectable vulgarities of mass media and the disreputable ones of organized crime, as well a tangle of sexual dramas and conflicts that Hollywood could, at the time, hardly handle. Stream, It's Always Fair Weather, on YouTube, Google Play, and other services, The River, photographed by Collection Christophel, Alamy sexual dramas come to the fore in Tsai Ming Liang's Rai Yet Anguished 1997 drama, The River, set in Taipei and starring the director's frequent collaborator Li Kong Sheng, who plays his recurring role of Shao Kong, the actor's real-life nickname. Here, however, he's introduced by his real name when he bumps into a friend Chen Shang-Chi, who asks him to help out on the film shoot where she's working. There, the director, played by the real-life filmmaker An Wei, asks him to play the role of a corpse and a flood in the shallows of a filthy river. Soon thereafter, Xiao Kong develops severe neck pain, endures a wide range of treatments in vain, and is brought by his father to a small-town faith healer. Meanwhile, Xiao Kong discovers that his parents' marriage is troubled, his mother is having an affair with a local pornographer and his father seeks erotic massages at gay bathhouses. Sai adds an element of tragic misunderstandings and presents the agitated drama with a tensely, ironically contemplative style that ranges from glowing urban romanticism to dour degradation, he infuses the action with Several of his idiosyncratic obsessions, including the prevalence of leaks, suggesting the uncontrollable forces at work against the sheltering comforts of domestic life and behind the facades of personal identity.
Stream, The River, on Canopy and Amazon, Holy Motors, Photograph by Entertainment Pictures, Alamide Dennis Levant, who played the lead role in Leo's Carax's first three features, did a fierce turn as an anarchic a grand Carax's short film, mirrored in the compilation film, Tokyo, and returned to play the same character, glides through Paris, in which Levant, playing a man named Oscar, changes identities as he's brought from place to place and scene to scene, including an actual movie studio in which his motion capture performance for an action film has the sinuous choreographic allure of a musical production, he plays a family man, he plays the ferociously in as Levant dashes from role to role, Carex shifts from genre to genre, and as he spins off from Levant's work in his earlier films, he spins off from his own lifetime of cinephilic passion and propels himself into an ecstatic realm that will be hard to top though not for lack of trying. He's planning a musical, with a script and songs by Sparks and starring Adam Driver, now scheduled to be filmed next year, stream, Holy Motors, on Voodoo, Canopy, and other services, two weeks in another town, photographed by Everett Vincenti Minnelli made one of the great inside Hollywood movies, the 1952 melodrama, The Bad and the Beautiful, and, a decade later, spun off from it tangentially but brilliantly and yet another it. There, a formerly famous studio-era director named Maurice Kruger, Edward G. Robinson is working with an Italian producer on unfavorable terms, then, Kruger's former star from previous films, Jack Andrus Douglas, shows up, after being released from a mental institution where he landed after a catastrophic breakup with an actress, Sid Charisse, and takes a job helping Kruger with dubbing. Meanwhile, Kruger berates his young leading man, Davy Drew, George Hamilton, into a muddle, and is in turn berated by his wife, Clara, Claire Trevor, for his own philandering. Minnelli unleashes a male storm of passion, a vortex of desire and despair, a cyclone of raging ambition, and parses the Furies with a keenly controlled view of their role in the daily life behind the scenes and their reflection in the action shown on screen. That's where, two weeks in another town, makes high-energy contact with its predecessor, in a studio screening room, Kruger shows his key personnel one of his earlier masterworks, and it's The Bad and the Beautiful, featuring one of Douglas's intensely dramatic scenes. For a moment, instead of making a movie in which Douglas plays Jack Andrus, Minnelli makes a movie in which the fictional Andrus plays the real-life Douglas, and the vertiginous shift of identities comes off as the essence of grand-scale, star-centered filmmaking. Stream, two weeks in another town, on Filmstruck, Amazon, and other services.